Hello everyone, my name is Bruby Hu, and I'm an artist and graphic designer living in Ontario. For my presentation today, I will share some of my work and process with you. A brief introduction of myself. I was born in Xiamen, China in 1994. My parents and I moved to Vancouver, BC in 2011, and I finished my secondary school there. I then went to the United States for undergrad studies. In 2020, I finished my MFA studies at the University of Waterloo. My work is an entangled embodiment of the mundane architectural space, memory, and translation through visual and conceptual lenses of feminism and dualism. With subtraction, the works are transcribed responses to my surroundings, as well as metaphors to consensus and social subjugation. My parents and I moved frequently during the first two years in Vancouver, and I moved once a year when I was in Baltimore for undergrad. The experience of constant traveling amongst different pillars of cultural diversions is determining of the ambiguity of my work. As changing locations, which means changing surroundings and climates, generates disconnections. This kind of disconnection is produced by people interacting with other people in different cultures and social values. In my work, instead of directly confronting the cultural and social conflicts and differences between East and West, I try to find a common ground to reconcile these disagreements. The lack of explicit information is apparent as there are only fundamental shapes in my paintings. Using fundamental and geometric elements that everybody recognizes, such as rectangles, I find commonalities that dodge the conflicts, as some of the conflicts are impossible to resolve. By composing basic shapes, the paintings appear to be minimalistic. They appear at first to lack a message. When there isn't enough information, disconnection occurs, as well as ambiguity. The implicit approach is a process of reconciliation that grants narrative freedom to the viewers. The employment of geometric abstraction is also translations of architectural space that I interact with daily or from my memory. I received many comments about my paintings being minimalist or associated with minimalism. I'm not a big fan of this term, as art history has given it a cold feeling, not to mention it is also overused in design industry. In my opinion, not all minimalistic abstract works are indifferent with no content, since they have the ability of opening up more possibilities for each viewer's individual interpretations. Whether the shapes remind them of certain memory or colors that bring unique resonation. The ambiguity also speaks to the fragmentary and dubious quality of memory. I enjoy the ambiguity in my work, as once the work is out of my hand, I don't have any control over how the viewers perceive it. There is always a narrative embedded in each of my paintings. However, the viewers will never receive the same message because we are all individual entities in the world with distinct life experience. I'm often asked why I work mostly with paintings. I do a lot of planning in my sketchbook and my computer before I actually start working on a painting ground. In my paintings, I seek perfection in making smooth surface, yet I embrace the small unpredictable imperfections. What I mean by unpredictable is that even though I know what kind of general surface I will get by using tools such as a scraper, foam roller, or a taping knife, or adhere other materials to the painting ground, I cannot foresee exactly what kind of marks will be left on the surface. The marks, as imperfections, are generated by my hand and can never be reproduced identically in another work. Although I'm able to create imageries digitally, and my background in graphic design does show up in my paintings in terms of compositions and color palettes, which is something very difficult to unlearn and escape from, I still enjoy doing physical paintings. They directly and sincerely reflect my status at the moment of painting without a filter by digital devices. I often integrate the properties of light and shadow by combining multiple panels or canvases. The space in between diptychs or triptychs is activated. Because the colors and shapes extend from the front of the paintings to the sides, which creates colored reflections and shadows on the walls. A visual duality is constructed. What exists on the surfaces are not only the opaque paints, but also the more breathable reflections in contrast. Integrating multiple panels into one body of painting physically echoes the concept of disconnection and connection.
All the panels are still seen as one unified piece, despite their discrete physicality and differing contents, with the illuminating reflections connecting ambiguously in between. I have been working with torn paper shapes as well. It started as a therapy for me to lose some control and to work with some irregular edges. As I keep making more of them, I realize this is actually a translation process which I often engage with, being bilingual and constantly living in between. The first action is to tear the paper into irregular shapes with torn edges. I then carefully transcribe the shapes onto the painting ground using masking tapes before applying the paint. In this process of translation, subtle textures are created as organic traces by my hand, such as the background showing through or accidental mark left on the wet paint. Metaphorically, it is unavoidable to see the organic traces in the process of literal translation as well. There is always something missing, whether it is the original verb or adjective that do not have equivalence in the other language or the imagery embedded within an idiom loses its ability to convey the same message once translated. A comment I received about this series is that they give viewer a sense of longing. Firstly, I think it's from the torn edges, which suggests the action of tearing therefore separating. They were once a whole, but now apart. Secondly, I think it's because they are no longer the actual papers, but the gestures and memories of them. The original papers are gone. The contrast between acute and soft edges often unfolds as a preconceived formal dichotomy of masculinity and femininity. My engagement with hard edge shapes are also attempts to subvert these appropriated formalities. By utilizing rhombus shape, a shape that seems to have a strong formal resemblance of the female genitalia, my intention is twofold. The play with precise edges is an effort to recontextualize and to complicate the consensual characteristics imbued within the formalities of sharpness and softness. In my tone paper series, the repetitive tearing of paper become motifs of longing as well as resistance. They are metaphors of the ripped and disciplined female experiences under the patriarchal systems, as well as efforts to counteract the patriarchal consensus through subtlety and solidarity. Thank you so much for watching and listening.